Hey everyone. The topic of this discussion is regarding a study I did a while back. It was a little short series called The Rock. And some of you may recall where I really kind of got wrapped up into this unusual, very oddly cut shaped stone that is under the dome of the rock and this building is wondrous it one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven uh, it's got four pillars four pillars that's eight it's eight sided it's an octagon it has what looks to be a sensor on top. If you go and re, you know review those those little short series, I pointed a lot of these different things out. And briefly, I'm going to show a screenshot of the sensors. I found this is in a very old Bible, but as you can see, these little tops looks like the top of that dome of the rock. And a sensor is a small portable vessel of metal fitted to receive burning coals from the altar and on which the incense for burning was sprinkled. This is very interesting when we think about that Dome of the Rock and the shape of that little top covering. Well, this minor prophet Haggai has been an amazing study our Heavenly Father continues to lead me back into some of my research and I have found something that is absolutely amazing. I knew I was led to this particular cornerstone, but I was using the, my graft. It was the old one and it was going clockwise and I couldn't, It the, the stone didn't fit. I knew that it looked to be a stone that had been like a cornerstone with a hinge of some sort and I'm, I'm gonna go show a picture of it and here's a, a an overhead copy view of it as you can see it's notched out right here and it looks like something was laid across right here and then you can see how these rocks are kind of carved like there was a hinge of a door right here of some sort it's what it looks like to me and then you can also see where it's notched out right in here and then interesting enough it has this hole right here almost in the center of what had once been in my opinion is that threshing floor of Ornon that King David According to the word of the Lord, he purchased from that Jebusite prince. And in my previous study, called The Rock, those little short series, I had questioned the purpose of this hole being in this rock. And I felt then, as, as I feel without any doubt now, that this hole represents the place where our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified that this is the rock that they were calling Golgotha the place of the skull and I hope that as we go further into this presentation that it will leave you with that same understanding but this rock right here is a testimony of the conception, the birth, and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ is all stamped on this rock. This is his testimony to us, and that is why it has been preserved till this time. Up to this date is why this stone has been preserved. From this picture, I have a survey copy that was dated in 1864 by Charles Wilson 
And this survey is quite amazing, to say the least. Here is a copy of the survey. Charles Wilson, 1864. I'm going to zoom in. And this is going to be on the facing the east right over here on this side. But as you can see, it's been carved out. It's a corner stone. And it's been notched out right here. And it's been notched out right here. Very interesting. And then we have the hole that was carved into the top of this skull, uh, this mound there on top of uh, Mount Moriah. And this is an ancient threshing floor from Crete, but you can see it's in a circular shape. This would be sort of like, in most cases, it's going to be hard surface. It's going to be like a rock. And we know that our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on Golgotha, or the skull. And if you think about something like this, that is just this little naked area, I mean, say these stones had been removed in this, this little naked area, that would resemble the top of a skull. And as you can see in this photo, this is the rock, and then this is the dome above it. It is incredible when the sun starts coming through these windows all these vibrant, beautiful colors of the rainbow start popping out. And here's another photo. It's just amazing. Look at these colors and the designs. It's just beautiful. And then there's this, an incredible photograph of looking upwards into the dome that little sensor this is an incredible photograph the way it I mean the way everything is painted the way everything is cut and designed the numbering of the different windows it's just amazing and here is another photo looking down from above and this is pointing, t this is going toward the east, even though it's showing to be like this is south, but this is actually east. So if we flip it, we can get a little better idea of the alignment of this particular rock and the shape of it. It has a notch right here, according to the survey. It's kind of hard to see it here um, in this particular photograph, but there's a little notch right here. And then it's notched out right here. And then we've got the line going up and then across. And then it's what's left of the circle with this hole right here. Now, I want to show my graph that I had, the old one, so you can, you know, so I can present the two different graphs and why I couldn't, it, it nothing really matched up on the first graph because it was going clockwise, like I say, but when I turned everything and went counterclockwise, that's when everything started to line up. And then when I was doing the research on the study for the 9-11 truth, and I was reading in the prophet Haggai, Keslu, the ninth month, Keslu, the 24th day, being the conception of our Lord, then I was led to go back to this rock. And it's very interesting. But I'm going to show the other graph so you'll see where I'm at. This was the old graph that I had, the first one that I did. And when we looked at that cornerstone that is under the dome, 
it w it falls right here in this corner right here but this is going from the spring equinox and it's going to the first month uh, this being the first month second third it's going on around Tishri's here is seven and then we have our Lord's birth date, the day he was born on 195 uh, of Tishri, the 15th day. And then it goes on around to Tabith and, and what have you. But that cornerstone, it's right here. Couldn't figure out, I couldn't tie it in with anything right here. I knew it was in this area, but I couldn't figure out why, it, I, you know, it was just there. Now I know why, it's because I needed to turn it, to flip it around and bring it counterclockwise. This is the most recent one that I've done. I've gone in, let me get this moved over, and I'm gonna try to focus in on this area right here. But as you can see, I have moved, um, we're going counterclockwise, it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, moving upwards. On the last video, I showed that in the prophet Haggai, chapter 2, ninth month, Kaslu, 24th day, is the 264 mark. That's the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then nine months plus later, on the seventh month, 15th day, which is the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles, this is his birth. So I want you to pay close attention to the shape right here and then how it coincides and, and place it on the Dome of the Rock. We've got two corners. We have a notch here. And then over here, there's a small notch. And then right here, about the 222, uh, 223 mark is where that hole is. It's amazing. In the prophet Haggai, in verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, in the seventh month, that's Tishri, in the 1 and 20th day, that is the very last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Came the word of the Lord of the prophet Haggai, saying, Verse 2, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shatil, governor of Judah, and to Yeshua, the son of Jadok, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Verse 3, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Question. And how do you see it now? Question. Is it not in your eyes in comparison? of it as nothing question verse 4 yet now be strong O Zerubbabel and Zerubbabel means he that was born in confusion but has come out of confusion saith the Lord and be strong O Yeshua son of Jadok the high priest and be strong all ye people of the land saith the Lord and work for I am with you saith the Lord of hosts Verse 5, according to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. Verse 6, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Verse 7, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 10, in the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, that's Keslu, the twenty-fourth day, which equals to be December the seventh. On the Gregorian, in the second year of Darius came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet. And we're going to skip down to verse 15. And now I pray you consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. And it says here at verse 18, Consider now from this day and upward, 
from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. So we understand that the ninth month, 24th day, is the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that his birth is on the seventh month, Tishri, 15th day. So then when he speaks to Zerubbabel, well, exactly what did Zerubbabel do? See, I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with Zerubbabel or some of these other people, these other names, I'm going to say, because when we look at these names in the Hebrew, they have amazing meaning. But now, in particular, Zerubbabel, in Zechariah 4, 6 through 10, says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 7, Who art thou, O great mountain? Question, before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone, thereof with shoutings crying, Grace, grace unto it. Verse 8, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Verse 9, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Verse 10, For who has despised the day of small things? Question. For they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. And when he's talking about those seven eyes, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. So when we understand that Zerubbabel is the one that chiseled out this rock, it's amazing. And further, we can, in verse 7 here in Zechariah 4, grace, grace unto it. We know that five is grace. Our Lord Jesus Christ is grace. I mean, he brought grace to us. These are amazing scriptures. And I know that there's going to be some that question about the altar of the Lord cannot be marked with a tool. It cannot, a tool cannot touch it. Otherwise, it pollutes the altar. So I just wanted to point out that uh, in one place, Micah 3.12, our Heavenly Father is talking about the transgressions of the house of Israel. And just so it's known, and I'm sure most already know, that our Heavenly Father is the one that allowed Zion to be plowed as a field. This is right here in verse 12, Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. So our Heavenly Father, I mean, it was it stated in so many places about his temple and all of that being polluted by the heathen. So we know that that's a fact. So everything has already been polluted. So the fact that they, Zerubbabel, would have used a tool in order to carve onto that which is already polluted to pr make it into a marker is my point. It's like a signet, it's like a sign. And briefly, I wanted to point out that in. Nehemiah 12, and in verse 27, there's more than just the dedication of the temple. There's also the dedication of the wall, along with other things that were purified. And as you can see in verse 30, it's the priests and the Levites purified themselves and purified the people and the gates and the wall. And what makes this stand out in my mind is when we go further down is where they get to 
the prison gate right here in verse 39 it talks about the gate of Ephraim the old gate and the fish gate and the tower of Haniel and the tower of Mia even unto the sheep gate and they stood still in the prison gate so stood the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God and I and the half of the rulers with me and it's really interesting like in Jeremiah 32 verse 2 it talks about Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison which was in the king of Judah's house isn't this interesting but anyway, I just wanted to point this out. If you get a chance, you might want to, you know, go in and research this a little bit more in depth. But just for those that want to talk about this rock being carved with tools um, by man, there's a reason behind it. And without doubt, that particular rock was sanctified and purified and dedicated for a purpose and one that I firmly believe is it all ties to and bears witness of God's Savior Yeshua our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as a memorial as a witness not only of the past but what that short time that is left to for all things to be fulfilled for those 70 weeks to be fulfilled as we learn in Daniel 9 and in Psalms 134 verses 1 through 3 a song of degrees behold bless ye the Lord all ye servants of the Lord which by night stand in the house of the Lord Verse 2, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Verse 3, the Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. And the Song of Degrees, the little scale that I was inspired to design, it is a degree, it's 360 degrees. It tells a story. It truly tells a story, especially that cornerstone and the marks of the degrees on the scale compared to that precious cornerstone, the rock under the dome. And it was placed there, in my opinion, to bear witness. It's like a witness stone, a memorial for those who have eyes to see and discern it up here in Matthew 24 2 and Jesus said unto them see ye not all these things question verily I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and he's talking about turning it to dust that day hasn't happened yet we know that they got a precursor when Rome went in there in 70 AD but there's another one that's coming where that whole mountain, uh, God's uh, temple mount area is going to be cleansed with fire. It's going to be made into a plain. When our Lord stands on the Mount of Olives, it's going to cleave in two. We can learn more in Psalm 79. O oh God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance, thy holy temple. Had they defiled, they have laid Jerusalem on heaps. In Psalms 107, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. So we are told about our Heavenly Father has allowed this to, to take place. But even more so when that false Messiah stands on, on that holy mount claiming himself to be Christ and Messiah and God, Satan himself. Now that's when it's going to get real, really real. 
But not to digress here, and popping over to the New Testament, we have Ephesians 2.20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Cornerstone. And we can look at the side task, Isaiah 28.16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. We also have Psalms 118, 20, verse 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. And you have Matthew 21, 42, Mark 12, 10, 11, Luke 20, 17, verse through 18. In Luke 7, 2017, and he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner question. Verse 18, whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind them to powder. And then we have in Act 4, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And in Peter, 1 Peter 2, 8, In a stone of stumbling, in a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. I mean, this is that, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is that precious cornerstone. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to go back to the graft, and let's discuss that a little bit more in detail. Now back to the scale. We're looking at the ninth month, the 24th day, which falls at the 264 mark. And as I said in my last video, we have the course of Abaya, which is down here. Well, at the 264 mark is shows, according to my calculations, it is showing this to be the end of the ninth course, Yeshua, which means God's Savior. Okay, so when Mary, this was his conception, Mary couldn't have traveled the next day because that was the beginning, that was a Sabbath. It was the beginning of the 10th course which is Shekinah at the 265 mark. That would have been 925. Or we're looking at, at 264, that would be December the 7th. And then at the 265, that would be December the 8th on the Gregorian calendar. So we have the conception right here, and we have the course of Yeshua and the course of Shekinah, that Shekinah glory of the Lord. Then, of course, you have to go all the way around to get to his birth, which happens on the 15th day of the seventh month, Tishri, at the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, we're getting almost to the end where it starts anew. The courses repeat on the 22nd. That's when the, the 24 courses start. So we're looking at the, the very last course right here, which is Mosiah. And in order to understand what these words, these names mean, we need to go back to 1 Chronicles 24 and just look at the meaning of the Hebrew names. And also keep in mind the precious cornerstone under the dome, that dome of the rock. It has that hole carved into that stone and it falls right in here. And according to my calculations, it falls around the 222.5 mark, which is very interesting. And that would put it coming from the third course, Harim, into the fourth course, Serum, Serim, Serum. 
and we'll look at those two also. And I know there's a lot of people out there that don't use the King James Version Bible. Well, you know, too sad for them because we have the Strong's Concordance, which takes these words. If you just read this word, it don't mean much. I mean, it's just, an, it's just a word. It's just a name. But here's the kicker. Okay, in verse 7, and now the first lot came to Jehoarib, and you can see it translates back to be Yahweh will contend. That's Yahweh will contend. The second to Jediah, Yah has known. Harim, snub nosed. And then we can look up the word and see a little bit more in detail to seclude. To be blunt as to the nose, make a curse, consecrate, destroy, devote, forfeit, have a flat nose, utterly slay, make away. We have a lot more deeper meaning behind some of these words. Barley. When we get to see or reem, barley grains. And we can look, it says the meaning, the plant and the masculine form, meaning the grain, the sense of rough, roughness, barley. Now, this is where the third going into the fourth, this is where that interesting hole is in the rock. We go to the fifth, Melchiah, Melchiah. It says king of, that is appointed by Yah. Appointed by Yah, that's the fifth course. Me Yamin says form the right hand. Interesting words. The seventh to Kotsi or Kots in the sense of pricking a thorn. And the eighth is Abiah, says father of Yah. That is a worshiper. The sacred name it says father, forefather. And looking at the word Abaya a little bit more in detail, but it says father, that is worshiper of Yah, but I think it means Abba, Abba Yah. Abba means father. And Yah is God, so Father God, God our Heavenly Father, I believe is what that means. The ninth course is Yeshua. It says He will save. Yeshua is goes back to Yahweh save. That's Yahweh's Savior. And tenth is Shekinah. Yah has dwelt. That's the Shekinah glory. Isn't it interesting? We have the ninth course going from 264 into the tenth course. Shekinah. Yah has dwelt. Yah dwells there. And we know this from Ezekiel 1 about that Shekinah glory, which is that beautiful rainbow colors of the throne of the Lord. In verse 12, we have Elishib, God will restore. That's in the, in the 11th course. 12th course, it's Yakim, he will raise. Isn't that interesting? He will raise, and this is in the 12th course, to rise. In the 13th course is chapa. This is a canopy or a closet, a defense. In the 14th, seat of his father, to sit down. By implication, to dwell, to remain, the seat of his father, Yeshua, Shekinah glory. 
God will restore. He will raise the seat of his father. Isn't that amazing? So people don't want to use the King James Version Bible and get a deeper understanding. That's their choice. Uh, I like the meat of the Bible. In verse 14, the 15th course to Bilga, dissidents, says to break off or loose, desist from grief, comfort, recover, strengthen. The 16th course, admire, talkative, to say, answer or appoint, or to utter. Verse 15, the 17th to Kizir says, perhaps protected to enclose or pinned. The 18th course, the sever, dispersive, pit stats. The 19th to Petha Yah. Yah has opened. God has opened. The meaning, the same. It says to open wide, specifically to loosen, begin, plow, carve, appear, break forth, let go free. The 20th course. To Yah as Kale, God will strengthen, to fasten upon, hence to seize, be strong, fortify, to bind, restrain, conquer, help, repair. And then it's talking about God will strengthen God Almighty. In verse 17, the 21st course to Yaquin, he or it will establish, he will establish, to be erect, to set up, prepare, apply, appoint, prosperous, he will erect, he will establish, uh, to fashion, fasten, firm, be fitted, frame, ordain, Make right, make ready. And the 22nd course is Gamul or Gamiel, maybe, to treat a person well or ill, that is, benefit or requite by implication of toil, to ripen, that is, specifically to wean, bestow on, deal bountiful. Do good recompense, requite, reward. House of the weaned, Beth Gamil. In verse 18, the 23rd course, Dela Yah. Yah has delivered. Yah has delivered. Properly to dangle, that is to let down a bucket for drawing out water. Figuratively to deliver. And then in the 24th course, Mayazaya, in the sense of protection, rescue of Yah, rescue of God, to be strong, strengthen, to save, gather, gather self, self to flee, retire. And this would be the last of the, the courses, this course right here. Rescue of Yah, rescue of God, to save. And this would be the course that would, be, would have been running during the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. As all of them would have been, actually, because all the priests during those three required holy days where they all gathered together for the the, the feast passover 
uh, and Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles, all the priests would be working in the temple and helping, you know, with the sacrifices and everything. Okay, so going back to the graft one more time. So we have Yeshua, we have Shekinah, we have the 24th course, Messiah, God will deliver right here. And then in here we have the third and fourth courses, the third going into the fourth, Harim and Seorim as we find in 1 Chronicles 24, 8, verse 8, right here. Another thing that I noticed was when you subtract 264 from 195, it's 69. And Daniel 9, 25 and 26, or 24, actually, starting with 24, 70 weeks are determined. But in verse 25, 7 plus 60 plus 2 equals 69 weeks. And Messiah was cut off. Very interesting that we have 69 days right here. Very interesting. And when I first overlaid the... Dome of the rock onto this corner right here. At first, I thought that where that interesting hole was carved out, I thought it was at the two two five mark, but it's actually on the two 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 mark right here. And when I discovered that this was sixty nine here 69 days I divided that by 2 when I did that it was 34.5 so I added the 195 plus 34.5 and it gave me the 229.5 mark and then I subtracted the same thing from the 264 uh, I, I subtracted 34.5 and it gave me the 229 mark 0.5 and it's right here. That would be halfway, thinking about Messiah being cut off halfway, midway. But that's not what it was telling me. It was telling me that from this point where it should have been, to this point is seven days. There's a seven day difference right here. Very interesting. That's why it was falling on the 222.5 mark right here. So just, you know, something to think about. I thought that was really interesting because we know that there was that one week that was not because Messiah was cut off before the fulfillment of the 70 weeks were determined. And in this depiction, I have cut out the corner of my graph. And as you can see, here's the corner. It's the 180 and the 270 right here. We have the 264 which is the conception of our Lord, Jesus Christ. And then we have his birth right here. And then here's that, that hole in the rock. This is from the survey by Charles Wilson in 1864. And I found this absolutely amazing. This this cornerstone and as you can see right here it's notched out right here and if we were to make a line it would just go right over to this same area right here so we have the conception then we have the birth 
and then here at the we have 69 days right here and then as I was talking earlier it should be at the the 229 mark but it's seven days shy is where this hole is it's seven days shy of being at that 229 mark interesting enough but I tried to fit this in here as best that I could this was part of in my opinion this was that threshing floor that circle that Zerubbabel carved and as that foundation stone it can't get any better than this in my opinion this rock has the testimony of the conception and the birth and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ stamped on it as a memorial that precious cornerstone that testimony all wrapped up into this one rock and as we read in first chronicles we had the meaning the hebrew translation of the different courses and the names that those represent we have yeshua right here at the 264 265 is shekinah it's right there savior and glory all praise to the heavenly father what an amazing revelation This is on the north. This is on the south. This is north looking south. This is east over on this side. This is the seventh month. This is the tenth month right here. This is the eighth month. approximately the 12 13th day right here of bull and just so some people that might be naysayers if they wish to understand what I did all I did was just take a copy of the graph erase the center so we could see it the lines better and this is over here on the right is a copy of Charles Wilson's appraisal I just made a copy and I pasted it and then I just lined it up as best that I could and the only thing I did was just enlarge it a little bit and of course I had to tilt it a little bit to kind of get it to get the corners on it Trying to line it up in there. And there we are. That's as close as to getting it on the 180, getting it lined up right here. And then also right here at the top on this line so we you can see where it's notched out here and you can see where it's notched out here and you can see where it's pointing 15 approximately 15 days right here it's notched out 
And here's one last shot of the Charles Wilson Dome of the Rock, 1864. Here it is, that notch for the Feast of Tabernacles. And then his conception right here. And then here's the, the hole that was carved into the rock. And this is pointing east. This is the east side over here. It's amazing. Anyhow, I hope that y'all have enjoyed this study. It has been a revelation to me. And I'm so very grateful to our Heavenly Father for pointing this out. And like I said, I had already done a study on the Dome of the Rock. And it's called The Rock. And trying to understand what was so very special about this preserved cornerstone under the dome, this eight-sided octagon with all these beautiful colors, these rainbow colors that are inside what looks to be a sensor. Now I think that we have a, a better understanding of it and praise the Lord. God bless everyone and y'all have a good day.